he had hope that and the hope that we find in the world uh, does not give us encouragement mm -hmm. but Abraham had the hope of the Lord and he knew that God was faithful and whatever he promised that he would perform that amen and and so I'm going to turn it over to brother Fred hope does not disappoint hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, it's important for us to know that there's some building blocks in the kingdom that are that work together, mm. and so we're going to be looking at those things tonight, and and that relates to hope and joy in particular. We're going to see how they uh, relate to each other, and if we can keep the hope and joy, uh, then then it's going to make a difference in our life. Our faith will be more effective. Our love will be more effective, and we're going to see that in the in the scriptures tonight. Now, hope uh, in the Greek, uh, it's a word like uh, Elvis. You may remember the rock and roll singer Elvis. <laughs> uh, it's a word like that, it, but it has the word P in it, so it's Elpis. And, and the definition then of the Greek word for hope is um, joyous expectations of good. So if you need a breakthrough, uh, that's a good thing. If you need a breakthrough in your life, if you need health or healing, that's a good thing. And so when you you have to have joy, if you have a joyous expectation of something good happening in your life, then you have hope. Now, a lot of people say they have hope and they know the scriptures about hope, but they don't have joy. And, and so since hope is built on joy, they the two things move together. And so if you have joy, then I know you really have hope because hope is built on joy. And the more joy you have, the more hope you have. And But if a person is in despair and oppressed, mm -hmm. then they may not feel any joy and they may be hopeless. But the two to go together. And so we have to keep our joy meter high. And mm -hmm. so how, I want to ask you tonight, how high hey, is your joy meter? meter? <laughs> I hope it's I hope it's above the ceilings of your house. I hope it just goes out out the roof. Uh, these two words are very important. These two concepts, and they build their building blocks in the kingdom. And so we need to know how they operate together. Well, Romans five five is where we're going to start. This is our uh, basic verse to kick off the message, and that tells us that. Hope does not disappoint. If you have real hope, you're not going to be disappointed. So I want Sherry to read this out of a couple of different versions. Okay. Uh, this is out of the New American Standard. And hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Okay. So hope is related to the Holy Spirit. See, if, if you don't have the Holy Spirit in your life, you don't have God's hope because God's hope comes through the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. And we also know then that hope is based on joy. It's the more joy you have, the more hope. But, but what is joy? Joy is a fruit of the Spirit. So again, mm -hmm. joy goes back to the Holy Spirit and hope go back to the Holy Spirit. And so we have to have both of those. Now, there's another version I wanted to share, share you to read us about Romans 5.5, 5, because it says, we know we have, that God dearly loves us. If you know God dearly loves you, you then you're a candidate to have hope and mm, joy. Hallelujah. Okay. This is from the New Living Translation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. So how do we measure that God really dearly loves us? Because of the Holy Spirit. If we have the Holy Spirit in our lives, we're hearing from the Holy Spirit. We're being guided by the Holy Spirit. We know that God truly loves us Amen. and dearly loves us. And that is the basis for hope. It, it it's not just on the basis of uh, intellectual knowledge, but it's on the uh, basis of a heartfelt belief that the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit, 
and you know that the Holy Spirit is moving and operating in your life, Amen. then you have joy because that's the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And you have hope uh, because hope is the joyous expectation of, of good. good. Yeah, something good is going to happen to you. Right? You know, I was um, having uh, breakfast this morning and Bible study uh, with uh, uh, some ladies and we were talking about about the joy of the Lord. It one of the women said uh, that she, uh, in the last few days, had felt hopeless and that nothing was turning out good for her. And and I and I thought, wow, this really goes back to this message that, and I knew that Brother Fred and I were going to be doing this message tonight that hope does not disappoint and that it keeps us from from being hopeless and and but we have to have that that expectation joyous expectation that something good is going to happen if if you're if a person's mindset is that things are failing things are not going the way they think they should go and nothing turns out good for me then this is this is an attitude of hopelessness okay. and and so we prayed for her this morning and she left uh the place where we were a different with a different mindset she had a different look on her face she had a glow on her face and where she had come in uh with with no glow and with with no hope and uh and so so we we began to go around the table just talking about the good things that god had done for us remembering the good things that god had done for us and and i believe that that is one of the things that brought her out okay. of of the hopelessness hallelujah yeah hallelujah you know one good thing that God does for us every day is to give us air to breathe. Amen. You know, if, air, if air was about five foot above our heads, we wouldn't be able to get to Amen. it. But he, he brought that air right where we are so we could Thank breathe. You, Jesus. That's his air. And glory to Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. All Hallelujah. life comes from the Lord. Uh, another important uh, verse in Romans is uh, chapter 8, verse 28. If you love God, you you know that he's going to work things out. Amen. Read this Amen. verse this year. And we know that God causes all things to work together for good for those who love him to those who are called according to his purpose. Okay. Hallelujah. So we together know, for the good. Every, he works everything together for the good. So he loved us. He, he That's what... We started out with Romans 5, 5. He dearly loves us. Amen. And so because we know that he dearly loves us, we can love him. And then we know that he's going to work everything out. We're all going through situations. Right. And difficult situations. But know this. Amen. He's going to do something good in your life. Amen. He's going to turn things Amen. around Amen. Uh, for your good. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, so Hallelujah. What's this next verse? Okay, this is in Nehemiah 8.10. Remember that hope, that joy is a fruit of the Spirit. Okay. So it's a force. It's not something that just shows up one day, but it's a force in your life. And it says in Nehemiah 8.10, we, we know this scripture, do not sorrow, do not be in sorrow for the Lord, for the joy of the Lord is your strength okay you see why do we need joy because that's your strength if you yeah. let your joy down then you've lost your strength amen and, and amen. when we go through difficult situations and we're all going through difficult situations we have to keep our strength up and that's the joy of the lord amen. is our strength and we have to have to remember that and joy see is not a natural thing and it's not happiness Happiness, mm -hmm. being happy, depends on what happens. A and those are natural things. And so happiness is an emotion. A and that's out in the flesh, uh, fleshly realm. Uh, and But joy is not. It's not in the fleshly realm. 
joy is spiritual and it's a fruit of the spirit <coughs> and of course we all know what the fruit of the spirit is we can see that in galatians chapter 5 uh sherry so read galatians 5 verses 22 and 23 please okay. but the fruit of the spirit is love that's what holds everything together joy peace long-suffering kindness goodness 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 faithfulness gentleness self-control against such there is no law there is no restrictions there is no restraints okay hallelujah so uh joy then is a fruit of the spirit and then you have several fruit of the spirit here we're talking about nine fruit of the spirit other places it talks about other fruit so there's just no limit on how much fruit of the spirit you can have and how much joy you can have but one good thing i want to say is that you may have come tonight and you may not have had much joy but before this is over with we're going to impart, impart joy. joy we're going to impart joy so you may have come in here and you may have been uh, uh overwhelmed with uh, your situation but tonight we're going to impart strength to you because we're going to impart the anointing oil of joy, joy. hallelujah and, you know and I, I think about um joy um right here with us uh i think about your name and i think about that that we are to bring forth our names and that's why names are so very important uh when you name your child when you uh whatever you're called uh is 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 the the essence of your being and and so i think about how much joy joy brings uh to other people and and i have a sister and my only sister and her name is joy and she brought me such joy uh at six and a half years old i prayed for a brother or a sister and because I was tired of playing uh, restaurant and waitress by myself. And so I wanted a brother and a sister, or a sister. And, and when my sister was born, uh, I, I took care of her. Uh, as a baby, she slept in my room. I changed her at night. I fed her at night. Um, and I was, I was, I was there and and she has been such a joy uh, to me. And so names are important. Okay. So uh, I want you to think about uh, Colossians 1, verses 4 and 5. And it talks about the faith, faith and love. And where where do these things come from? Where do our faith and love come from? And, and so I want you to read this verse. Okay. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus, and of your love for all the saints because of the hope which is laid up for you in heaven of which you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel okay so paul is writing to the the believers in Colossae, and uh, he's saying i've heard about some things in your mm -hmm. life i've heard about your faith i've heard about your love and so these are these are public things. Mm -hmm. And so you might say, well, I've got faith, but nobody knows I have faith. Or I have love, but nobody knows I have love. No, uh, faith and no. love are public um, uh, uh, forces. And, mm -hmm. and you need to let people know you have faith. If people need prayer, step up and have love for them and, and have faith to agree with them and pray for them. Uh, and so these are these are things that we know about in the public that are open if you have faith if you have love people need to know that and that's the same thing that uh, paul wrote to the ephesians he said wherefore i also after i heard of your faith in the lord jesus and love unto all the saints i don't i don't stop praying for you isn't that interesting yeah you had yeah. so much faith and love and, and it was widely known it just it, it just went over uh, different cities that uh, the Ephesians and the Colossians, uh, they had faith and love. But the other uh, verse I want Sherry to read here again, I know she just read it, and this is Colossians 1.5, and, and he said, you have faith and you have love because you have hope. 
Oh, mm -hmm. read that verse. Because here. of the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, of which you heard before in the word of truth of the gospel. Okay, so here it is. This is a group of believers and they have faith and they have love. But he said, you have those things because you have hope. Okay, so that's very interesting. If a person doesn't have hope, if they're hopeless, they also don't have faith and they don't have love because they are the fruit of hope. He said, you have faith, you have love, because you have hope. Mm -hmm. So where does your faith come from? It comes out of your hope. Well, you know that by the definition of faith. Yes, faith is, is the, the substance, substance of, of things hoped hope for. for. So faith is the substance. So faith is the substance of hope. So let's think about what is hope in the world. A hope is just a word. It's kind of like, well, oh, I wish this would happen. When you say, mm -hmm. oh, I, I, I hope this happens. Uh, the world is just saying, I wish it would happen. Well. There's a lot of things they might wish for, but they're not really putting any faith behind it. And so faith is the substance of hope. Faith, is, And so if you have hope, then you can have faith. Uh, mm -hmm. That's very important. But also even here he says, if you have love, it's got to be based on your hope. Uh, and we're going to look at it from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. We're going to look at it from Colossians 3, 14. I want you to read these two verses. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, this is one verse one out of verse two. One verse out of two translations. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Uh, Colossians 3, 14. But above these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. And then let's go to the Passion translation. Love is supreme and must flow through each of these virtues. Okay. Oh, hallelujah. So uh, he, he listed a bunch of virtues, the same kinds of uh, virtues uh, that are in the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, not exactly the same list, but it, he's saying all of these things, uh, they have to have love because love uh, encircles all of these other virtues. Or, or it, uh, it's on, it holds everything together. Amen. It's love that binds all of the fruit together. So you have all of the fruit and all of the fruit work together. Love and joy and peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, temperance. Uh, and against such that there's no limit how much you can have. Of this. You can have as much as you want to. But what I want you to see, though, is love is like a ball. And love is filled with all of the fruit of the Spirit. But if joy is not in the center of love, then your love is empty. Yeah, it's void. It mm -hmm. just has an empty spot in there. Mm -hmm. And so people can say they love. Oh, I love you. I love you. Uh, but if they don't have joy, if they don't have, if, if their face on their face is just a sour face, uh, mm -hmm. Just an old uh, 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 sourpuss, uh, some people yeah. say. They, then they don't have joy, and so their love is empty. But their faith is also empty. It's void. Yeah. It's not going to work because faith is the substance of things hoped for, and hope is the joyous expectation of good. And so if you don't have joy, you don't have hope. And if you don't have hope, you don't have faith, and you don't have love. So joy and hope are at the center of such things as love and faith. These are very important. I believe this is an important message for us to catch hold of. We have to keep our joy meter high. We Hallelujah. need to be uh, joyous. A and then we can have hope because hope is joyous expectation of good. God's going to do something good, good for amen. you today. today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And one thing that the Lord showed me was that hope, there's three that remain, faith, hope, and love. Isn't that right? Yes. And hope is in the middle. And it is a bridge. It is a bridge, but a bridge between faith and love. And and that that hope, which is the joy, it's built up of joy, it's made up of joy, is what holds things, you know, uh, it makes faith work, it makes love work. And that's why it says, you know, these are the, the three that are going to remain. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. And the second one out of the passion says love is supreme and must flow through each of these virtues. Love becomes the mark of true maturity. Okay. But it, it says it flows through all of these virtues and, and that we could say, well, it flows through all of the, uh, all of the fruit of the spirit. They all work mm -hmm. together. Uh, see, where it, did the fruit of the Spirit come from anyway? Well, it comes from the relationship that the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit have had together in eternity. That's what the fruit of the Spirit is. And it's how they re have related to each other throughout eternity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, because they've always existed. They've always been in relationship with each other. They've all been in fellowship with each other each other for eternity and that's their character and the nature of god is the fruit of the spirit and so they all work together and they work in relationships mm -hmm. now you might say well uh, i've got all of these things but i just live uh, as a hermit and i'm just shut up in in my house and i don't talk to anybody and i don't go anywhere and do anything well you're not expressing much of the fruit of the spirit mm -hmm. because the fruit of the spirit is for relationships it's for fellowship all of the all of those uh the character and nature of god how people relate one to another that's what it's all about now if there's a problem if there's a problem in your life or there's a problem uh in the nation or wherever there's a problem god's solution is always the holy spirit amen and amen. so yeah, we see this throughout the old testament that when uh, people are in a dry place and they're out in a wilderness and there there's no wa water, what he's going to do, he's going to bring the water. He's going to bring the rivers. Mm. And, and it's always a, a symbol and type of the Holy Spirit. I mean, so w when the people are in the dry land and maybe they've been uh, uh, very rebellious against God and they're in the wilderness and they're, and they're not... Uh, uh, and their strength has left them and they're weak and they're weary, mm -hmm. then the solution, God's solution is always to send the water, the water mm -hmm. of the spirit. Hallelujah. You know, Hallelujah. Jesus said, they talked about the rivers of living, living water, water that are in, in you. your belly. He said, Amen. he's talking about the Holy Spirit because when the Bible's talking about water, he's talking about, it's talking about the Holy Spirit. I mean, and so I mean. the joyous solution to problems is the Holy Spirit. And so this is really brought out in Isaiah 35 verses 1 and 2. I want you to read these verses. The wilderness and the desert will rejoice. Rejoice. Joy. And the desert will shout for joy and blossom. Like the crocus, it will blossom profusely and rejoice with joy and jubilation the glory of lebanon will be given to it the majesty of carmel and sharon they will see the glory of the lord the majesty of our god okay. hallelujah so god when god looks upon the his people and he sees that they're weary and worn out and having all these problems his solution send them the holy spirit Things Sins are going to change. The, yeah. Things are going to change. Something good is going to happen today. Hallelujah. You are in the presence of the Holy Spirit. That's his solution. Amen. When you've got a problem, your solution is the Holy Spirit. We need to have the Holy Spirit. Now, what will the Holy Spirit do for us? Well, it's going to give us, he's going to give us joy. He's going to give us hope. Hallelujah. He's going to, show us revelation of the word of God. Amen. Uh, and, Amen. And that's our solution. That's our way out of whatever problem we're in. I have something. Hallelujah. Okay. Okay. It's beginning to rain. Hear the voice of the Father. He's saying who soever will come and drink of this water he has promised to pour his spirit out on our sons and our daughters if you're thirsty and dry look up to the sky it's beginning to <laughs> rain hallelujah hallelujah see that song. he will send the holy spirit the whole, that song is about when you're dry and weary, 
He's going to send you the rain, but Amen. it's the rain of the Holy Spirit. And uh, you think about Hallelujah. the book of Joel. Uh, their joy had withered up. Oh, uh, yeah, it had uh, withered away. And the locusts had, had uh, come and eaten everything. And so what was God's solution? Well, we're going to pour out, out the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. <laughs> we're going to pour out the Holy Spirit in here. Uh, old men will dream dreams and your and young, young men will, men will have, see visions, have visions and your boys and, and your daughters, your daughters and will prophesy. Your sons are going to prophesy so the solution God's solution is the Holy Spirit well praise God the Holy Spirit is here with us Amen. He's Amen. Amen. Us and Amen. he's within you Hallelujah. And so you just Hallelujah. have to release him and I uh, and perhaps, uh, shut up on perhaps shut up. Uh, you, you came here tonight and you didn't have much joy. joy. And, and so you might be aggravated at me for talking about this message. <laughs> but this is your solution. Well, what is your problem? You it doesn't matter what your problem is. You need more of, of the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 So we're going to end with two examples. I have two examples I, uh, that I love Ooh. to talk about. Good, good applications. <clears throat> These are the applications to the message. And this was... Uh, Jehoshaphat, he was a king and, and he was in two big battles. And one of them was in Second Chronicles 20, and uh, the other one was in Second Kings, verse uh, chapter 3. And so, we're going to just look briefly at a few verses about this. And and, and he he was a, a ruler, he was a ruler. And one of the things we'll see right here in the beginning in Second Chronicles. It was just his attitude. And uh, one thing that I want you to get out of this, it's important to hear the prophetic voice. And it's important to have people around you who will encourage you and strengthen you in the things of the Lord. Amen. And so there was this big, in Second Chronicles 20, there was this big army that came against uh, Jehoshaphat and uh, King Jehoshaphat of Judah. And uh, the the people came and told him, "Oh, they're they're already here. They're just they're they're surrounding they're us. surrounding us, and they're coming. It's a huge, huge army, invading army coming against us. And Judah was just a little a little nation, and with a little army, and they, they had no comparison. Uh, what they had was little compared to the army that was coming against them. But you know, the first thing he said, and I love this." Uh, uh, in uh, Second Chronicles 20, and it says verse 6, it's the first one, mm -hmm. or 5. Very first verse I've got there, Second Chronicles 20. Mm -hmm. Verse 6. Okay. And said, O Lord God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over all of the kingdoms of the nations? And in your hand, is there not power and might? so that no one is able to withstand against you. Okay. Oh, hallelujah. So the first thing he does, there's this big army out there. He's yeah. in a big battle, a battle for life and uh, for everything that he holds dear to him. And, and what does he do? He talks about the goodness of God. Woo! He, Amen. He talks about how big and how powerful, how powerful, how mighty, how mighty his God is. He didn't talk about Hallelujah. how big and powerful the enemy was. Mm. He talked about how good and powerful and big his God was. He, he he didn't focus on the enemy. He focused on God. Hallelujah. A, good, a real good model for us to follow. And well, he reminded he reminded the Lord. He was saying, "Don't you, don't you know that you're you're the mighty one? You're the the God that has all the power." You know. He reminded God. Okay, and so uh, it's good to have people around you. And so what he did, he called the people together and they wanted to seek the Lord. And, and then a prophet prophesied. Amen. It's Amen. good to have people that God favors around you so they can help give you counsel. And in the multitude of counsel, there is safety. And, and hear what the Lord is saying. Amen. And so Amen. let's hear what uh, this prophet said here. Yeah, in verse 14. Then the spirit of the Lord came upon Haziel, and he said, Listen, all of you of Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you, King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, Do not be afraid, oh, oh. nor dismayed, because of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, listen to me, 
you need to hear this and some of you need to take hold of this for the battle is not yours but is god's hallelujah 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 now, uh, this is just oh, a, you want wonderful, me to read on? a wonderful story and i want you to hear a little bit more of it you will not need to fight in this battle position yourself and see that's what god is doing in the body of christ right now he is positioning and repositioning this is what he's doing he is putting people in strategic places in the workplace in in the business world in the government in the schools he is in your family he is positioning you and those of you that have been in a position you may be in a repositioning uh, atmosphere he may need you somewhere else he may need you in another area and so he's repositioning all right let's read on okay. position yourself stand still and see the salvation of the lord who is with you O judah of jerusalem do not fear again and I do, do not be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out against them, for the Lord is with you. Hallelujah. And Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God. Woo, listen to this. And you will be settled. You will be established. Believe his prophets, and you will prosper oh, hallelujah hallelujah, okay. hallelujah. so what they did then they just sent out the praisers first and yes the praisers yes said, uh what did they say praise, praise ye the lord, lord for his mercy endures forever praise ye the lord for his mercy endures forever praise ye the lord for his mercy endures forever, forever and ever more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, that seemed like a strange way to fight a battle, but he didn't, he weren't, he, his people weren't supposed to fight. They were just supposed to go out and do what God said to do. And so they praised, they sent out the worshipers first. And that's always the way it is that God sends out the worshipers and then all those mm -hmm. armies fell on each other and killed themselves. And so uh, Judah and their army, they didn't even have to get they involved. They didn't have to fight. They didn't have to fight because that God told them not to. Hallelujah. But let's go back and review. How, what did what did the king do? He talked about how big God, God is, is, how powerful he is, how mighty he is. He, so he focused on God. He didn't focus on the problem. What are you focusing on? Are you focusing on the problem? Or are you focusing on how big God is, how amen, mighty he amen, is, amen. how he is worthy to be praised? Hallelujah. Well, I love this. Well, thing. I want to give testimony right okay. now. Okay. I want to give testimony. Before we sat down here to do this Zoom meeting, I started having pain in both of my legs. I've been very busy today. I've been on my feet. Uh, for two or three days nonstop <clears throat> and and there was pain that was going through both of my legs and brother Fred prayed for me but all of the pain is gone I, I give testimony right now you. that every pain is gone in Jesus name I feel like I can run through a truth and jump over a wall hallelujah, hallelujah. I give the Lord praise hallelujah Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. All right, I won't follow this king through another battle. Now, this time, and this is Second Kings three, but it's the same king, Jehoshaphat, and uh, he uh, was called to be to go with the uh, king of Israel and the king of Edom, and they were going to fight uh, a rebellious king, uh, Moab, the king of the Moabites. And uh, so they get all of these three people gathered together. And of course, the Moabites were on the other side of the sea, uh, the Dead Sea. And so they had to make this big, long journey way around and it took them seven days. And, and during that seven, and of course, there's no water around uh, the Dead Sea that you could drink. And so they made this big uh, uh, journey for seven days and hadn't had any water. And, and so... Uh, look at the two kings. So the king 
of uh, Israel who had called the king of Judah to be with him and go with him, uh, he got very negative and said, well, the Lord has just brought us out here to destroy us. But Jehoshaphat, though, see, he had a different attitude. Mm -hmm. He had a, a positive attitude. And he said, we need a prophet of God. <laughs> Is there a prophet of God around here that we can call <laughs> on? And so uh, some, mm -hmm. some of the people said, uh, well, we can <laughs> call on Elisha. Uh -huh. Elisha is uh, near here, and and uh, we'll go get him. And so, again, we're looking at the attitude and the approach of Jehoshaphat. Uh, he didn't give up, and he didn't uh, want to, oh, I wish I hadn't come out here, and oh, woe is me, I'm, I'm, uh, things are hopeless here. No, he wanted to hear from God. His trust was in, in God. God. And that's important. He had hope because mm -hmm. his hope was in God. Amen. And so he wanted to hear. That's what happened on that first battle we talked about. He want, needed to hear from a prophet. He said, if you hear from the prophet and do what the prophet says, you will prosper. And then, so it's the same thing here. He, it's the same approach. He wants to hear from a prophet. And uh, so the they bring the prophet and the prophet uh, looks at the king of Israel, who was an evil man. And he said, I, I wouldn't have anything to do with you. But because Jehoshaphat is here, now I have, I respect Jehoshaphat. He's a godly king. And so I'm, I'm going to respond to what you need. Okay, so look at this situation. It's important to know who's around. You need to have some people around Amen. you Amen. who have the favor of God upon them. Woo! See, the king of Israel, of Israel would have mm. been defeated here, and the prophet couldn't have said anything good for him, but he could say something good and give directions for uh, the righteous king, uh, Jehoshaphat, which was from Judah. Those were two different empires at that particular point or two different kingdoms and so what he but he there wasn't enough movement of the holy spirit there <clears throat> for him to hear from the lord so he said i need somebody i need somebody that's going to help me get into the spirit and so he said i need a musician I need a psalmist. I need somebody to come in here and set an atmosphere. And maybe you're like that. Oh, maybe, wow, maybe you wow. haven't heard from the Lord. Maybe you're not hearing from the Lord. Well, have you set an atmosphere to hear from him? Have, mm. you, have you gotten around some people who worship the Lord and praise the Lord? Mm. Hello, set an yeah. atmosphere Hello, so you yeah. can hear from the Lord. And then, uh, so uh, Elisha needed a, pro a musician to set an atmosphere so the Holy Spirit could move and speak because there was a lot of doubt and unbelief there. Mm. <clears throat> and then he did hear. The prophet heard mm -hmm, yeah. uh, for, through the Spirit, heard what to do. And they were in this dry valley. And what mm -hmm. he said was, dig ditches. Oh, that seems strange. Dig ditches. Well, maybe this is your solution. Maybe you're in a dry place. Yes, dig ditches. Yes. And what were... Why did the why did he want them to dig ditches so the water could come? Hallelujah. <laughs> the solution, if you've got a problem, mm -hmm. the solution is the Holy Spirit. It's going to come like mm -hmm. rain. rain. It's going to come like a flood. And it's going fill to fill up come. the ditches. It's going to come, uh, and even though they didn't have rain, the water came because that's the mm -hmm. part, that's a type of the Holy Spirit coming. And when you're in a dry situation. You need the Holy Spirit. Amen. So dig Amen. ditches. Well, how can we dig ditches? Well, let's set an atmosphere oh, so the Holy yeah. Spirit can move. And, and mm, so mm. then uh, the next morning there was water in the ditches they dug. Now, if they hadn't dug any ditches, there wouldn't be any water there. So they had to be obedient to the word of the prophet, the, the prophetic Amen. word. Amen. And they had to obey the prophetic word, and that was to dig ditches. It seemed so... Uh, uh, so corn, I mean, so against the thinking to dig ditches in a dry place uh, so we could see the Holy Spirit moving in our midst, bringing water so that we could be refreshed. Now, when Moab, when the, when the enemy saw the water the next day, the way the sun was shining on it, it looked like blood. And so they thought, oh, well, all of these kings that have come here against us, uh, they've just turned on each other and killed each other. And so there's blood running in the valley. 
but it wasn't blood at all. It was the water. It was the water of the Spirit. The glory to God. That might have been a symbol of the blood of, of Jesus. Jesus. Amen. But he's going to defeat the enemy. And, and so uh, they they killed all of the people. They just destroyed all of the cities. They just left one city uh, where a few people, but they had torn down even the wall of that city. Uh, so they had destroyed the they destroyed the nation. So how did they do it? Let's review. How did mm -hmm. they get this great victory? Because they heard the prophetic voice. They wanted to amplify and magnify the Lord and see what he had to say about the situation. And we needed the spirit to move. And that's what we all need. And so no matter what mm -hmm. your problem is, you need Amen. more of the Holy Spirit. And he's going to show you the way out because he's going to shine light on the word of God and give you revelation on how to solve your problem. I, thank you so much Hallelujah. for being here. I'm thank going to turn Jesus. it over to Sherry. Hope <clears throat> will not disappoint you. God's hope will not disappoint you. And we have heard tonight that we must keep our joy uh, meter or our container filled up. And the way we do that is is by coming before the Lord in his presence, <clears throat> by hearing the prophetic voice, by setting an atmosphere so that the Holy Spirit can move in our lives. You know, and that's uh, part of that is the mindset, removing all uh, critical thinking, remove all judgment, remove all unforgiveness, remove all of the the negative mindset because Brother Fred has been talking to us about Jehoshaphat and, and a, the good attitude that he had. And he had an attitude of praise toward the Lord. And he had an attitude of reverence uh, toward uh, the, you know, the, the Father and, and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And I want you to know that you can hear from the Lord. You don't have to be in a in a room full of prophets. You have the Holy Spirit inside of you. And the word of God is a more sure word of prophecy. And so you can hear from the Lord yourself every single day. And he can and he is the one that will solve your problems. He's the one that will give you what you need so that you will have hope. Hope does not disappoint. And, and this is something that, that every single one of us need as we move forward with our families, as we move forward uh, with our work, uh, as we move forward as leaders and ministers uh, of the kingdom of God, we need hope. We need something that we can hang on to that will give us encouragement and and i believe that that is hope hope will not disappoint and so i'm gonna just open it up for a few well, minutes here and, we do, oh we're going to impart joy see hebrews 1 verse 9 said that uh, he has anointed us with the joy with, with the oil of joy and, and that was something the holy spirit spoke to me uh, 40 or 40 years ago mm -hmm. that he had anointed me with the oil of joy and because of that i can freely give it whatever i have received i i can impart it to you and so if you need more joy tonight uh, we're going to pray and believe and you can receive amen, amen. the anointed oil of, of joy. joy amen and so just raise your hands if you want Hallelujah. the joy of the lord we're going to release Jesus. it to you or such Shut as I have, have, I give it to you. to you in the name of Jesus. Jesus. You've given to me yes, Lord the Jesus. anointed oil of joy. Lord and I release it to I my brothers and sisters, Jesus. Father. Uh, we all need each other. We need the strength of the Lord. Yes, and That's yes, going to Lord come Jesus. through the joy of yes, the Lord. Yes, that is our yes. strength. And we release it we by release faith. faith. And by uh, instruction from the Holy Spirit that we were to impart the anointed oil of joy to uh, the other uh, people here in this meeting and those who will be watching uh, the video and recorded video in the future. Yes, yes, Lord Jesus. That there is 
uh, no limitations in the realm of the spirit and we are releasing the anointed oil of joy in the name of Jesus.